Finally, our very special guest, and Simone, you had it right. We save the best for last, don't we? And she is a survivor herself of human trafficking. After being gang raped, Donna Hubbard's life became a series of abandonment, abuse, addiction, gang crime, exploitation, prostitution, and violence. She was sold to a pimp, trafficked, and finally became gang property. Ms. Hubbard served a total of 10 years in and out of jails and prisons, and in the end, prompted her complete surrender to a greater destiny and purpose. Paroled in 1993 to Atlanta, Georgia, she founded Women at the Well Transition, Transition Center. As she says, our mission is to assist incarcerated, formerly incarcerated women and women and girls impacted by the criminal justice system and human trafficking to regain their lives, their families, and their dignity. Women at the Well Transition Center provides training, counseling, and direct services to formerly incarcerated women and girls, including street intervention with trafficked girls and women, relapse prevention, treatment job training, and employment readiness. Women at the Well Training Center hopes to acquire a 16 to 20 bed transitional facility to provide residential housing support to women and girls in 2019. Ordained in 1995 as a minister, Ms. Hubbard serves in the office of preacher, teacher, pastor, and elder. Women at the Well Center celebrates 20 years of nonprofit service in 2018. Ms. Hubbard is a friend to the UN. She has been featured speaker for the Santa Marta Group at the United Nations, where she received a standing ovation before the General Assembly. She was featured speaker at the 2017 AVSEC conference in Dubai. Ms. Hubbard works with Airline Ambassadors International as a certified human trafficking awareness trainer and has facilitated trainings in Hungary, Latvia, Iceland, Japan, Thailand, Malaysia, and Manila. She was featured a featured presenter in the 52nd training of airline and airport personnel to prepare for 2017-18 Super Bowls in Houston, Texas and Minneapolis, Minnesota. Ms. Hubbard is employed as a flight attendant for American Airlines. Ms. Donna Hubbard earned her BA in Theological Studies and her MS in Christian Counseling at Practical Christian Institute of Education Seminary Program in Los Angeles, California. However, she is proudest of her role as mother of seven daughters and one son, 10 grandchildren, and eight great-grandchildren. It is my great honor and privilege to welcome back our friend to the UN, Ms. Donna Harbord. Thank you so much. Um, every time I hear an introduction of myself, I'm, I'm still amazed. Wow, who are they talking about? And um, it makes me even more grateful to be alive today. Um, to my distinguished panel guest and to the panel that went before me, um, to my friend Archbishop Alza, the Santa Marta group, um, to Cindy McCain with whom my family and the world wept at the loss of a great giant. Um, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be here. And it is with a humble and dedicated heart that I recognize the fact that the trafficking of people of color has gone on for many centuries as an accepted practice and did not gain um, attention for unfortunately in the civilized world for many centuries. But today, whether it is people of color or any person that is trafficked, it is a shame to the civilized world. Um, at my last visit, a week ago in Qatar, His Excellency al Bakar made a statement that until the consequences that are in place for human trafficking are implemented, it is an issue that will not be taken seriously. I think that is a powerful statement because there are many, there are many policies and laws and rules and that are currently in place that are not implemented because as I heard earlier today corruption happens at some of the highest levels and so therefore it's really hard to implement them. 
I, um, let me begin by saying, imagine if you can the innocence of a child that is taken every day by the people she thought she could trust. Imagine her eyes staring at the ceiling, trying to hold in her screams and hold on to the stars. Imagine a man whose only motivation is to pro provide a better life for his family. And this man makes a decision to leave for a while in order to make his family's dreams come true, only to quickly find out that his sacrifice has little or no payoff. And he wonders if his fingers or his feet will ever heal and he longs for a meal that will stop his stomach pains. And if you still feel detached, imagine a young mother who is full of potential from a loving family, but whose life has already faced rejection and disappointment. She only hopes to one day find true love. She has a great job and a life of promise. And when she thinks she has found that someone that makes her feel like a princess, she wakes up in a daze to being raped and violated over and over again. And maybe you can't imagine those things. But when I woke up after being raped repeatedly that day, that night, I was full of shame and guilt, and I ran in desperation because desperate people do desperate things. I found myself in the grip of a pimp who sold me to a gang. And when you think of gangs, we think of weapons and we think of drugs. But do we ever think of where they got the money to purchase those items? It's called upgrading when you have a product in demand. Knowing my guilt and my shame would keep me paralyzed, my traffickers did not count on my desperation to save my children, leading me from enslavement to incarceration but I found that as my only way out. For the 40 million men, women, and children who are still enslaved, not only by the traffickers, but by their guilt and shame and by the social, social stigmas that go along with being survivors, and yet I found the strength to find my way to freedom while I was yet in prison because it was my only way out. Those 40 million plus people should not have to be re-victimized to find freedom or to realize their dreams. So while you may not relate to our experiences, you have it in your power and you have a human charge to be your brother and your sister's keeper. In examining the challenges, look deeper into what can be imagined, what can be accomplished, who can make a difference. Know that the rescue and redemption must be done not just for us, but by us and with us. We not only need to be rescued, but we need to be restored emotionally, psychologically, and socially. We must be advocates for the, for the employment, the establishment, and the engagement of survivors. And finally, we must create oversight to ensure that the monies that are raised are actually inclusive of agencies that provide, provide direct services and support to survivors. Finally, each of us will one day end up facing our maker one day. And on our headstone will be a date that we entered this world and a date we left this world, neither one of which we have very much to do with. But it's with that dash in the middle that we get a chance to make a difference. My method of healing includes Woman at the Well Transition Center, where we have served over 6,000 women and girls and men and been able to make a difference in their lives, giving them a chance to have a second chance without the stigma or the stereotypes that we live with every day. My way of healing also includes being a part of Airline Ambassadors International, which has given my voice a global platform to be able to really put a face to what all of us are gathered in this room about because we think it happens somewhere else and it happens to someone else. It happens right here. I was not kidnapped. But human trafficking it happens by force, fraud, or co coercion. And when I was told either I did what I was told to do or they would take one of my daughters to do it, I would have done anything 
to protect my children. My way of healing is also being a very, very proud flight attendant for American Airlines who saw me and not just my circumstances or my background and gave me an opportunity to be the eyes in the skies. I think there are very important steps that have to be taken moving forward today and I hope that you will hear me not just in the emotion of my plea but also in the experience and in the expertise of my, my um, travels and my advocacy and my passion. Fund NGOs that directly engage survivors at a grassroots level and I've heard it talked about but there are agencies that have been on the ground doing work with women and girls on the street and men and um, our transgender uh, individuals and our LGBT, LGBTQ um, population. We started on the streets 10 years ago providing condoms in an envelope from 10 at night till 4 in the morning to trafficked and prostituted girls, men, boys, and women. It wasn't easy, but it gave me one option because as a member of the clergy, I was told I was promoting their behavior. And my answer to them, to them was either I give them an opportunity to stay alive another day to make a healthy decision or I'll just do their funeral. And I chose to give them that information. So I think it's important to fund NGOs and really take a look at the NGOs that are doing the work on the ground every day. Second, I, I want to continue the, to press the implementation of the ICAO um, Circular 352, and which was partnered with by UNODC for training first responders, flight crew members, and law enforcement on how to recognize and report human trafficking. Most people don't report because either we don't want to be wrong or we don't want to get involved. And what I want everyone to understand that leave, we leave the prosecution up to the authorities, but it's recognizing it and reporting it that saves lives. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is stopping the re-victimization of victims through the criminal pro court process, which makes it difficult for survivors like myself to find employment, housing, and opportunities. I have to say thank you once again to God who gave me my life. And I often wonder, why me? And I think about the story about Moses when he went, when he took his people out of captivity and into a, a desert where they were bitten by a serpent. And he didn't know what to do with all these sick people. And he was told, take that same serpent that bit them Hold it up on a staff. Let the people look upon it so that they can be healed. And I believe that people need to see that we can and are everyday people. We're your sisters, your nieces, your nephews. We're your, your child's classmate. We're the girl down the street who struggles with young children as a single mother and makes de desperate decisions. But each one of you are here for a reason. It wasn't coincidence today that any one of you was here. It's not coincidence that I got a chance to sit next to a great woman, Cindy McCain. I want to say thank you for being willing to do something because the worst thing you can do is nothing and the best thing you can do is something. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. You are a blessing for so many, not just us, but so many in the world. Thank you. <laughs>